Hi, my name's Billy Hare, I'm Professor of Construction Management here at Glasgow Caledonia University. I'm Vice Chair of the BEAM Research Centre and I'm also Chair of the CIOB Health and Safety Panel. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about construction health and safety, which is obviously an important aspect of uh, any construction work. Now, we've came a long way in the construction industry since about the mid-1970s when the Health and Safety at Work Act was first introduced. Since then, we've gone from about 1,000 fatal accidents per year to around about 30 to 40, which is a, a great improvement, but obviously more can be done. Uh, let's not also forget health uh, in that phrase, health and safety. We tend to shout safety, but we often whisper health. Um, but I'm glad to say that in recent years as well, we've now seen health on the agenda and we're now making strides in that area as well. Well, as I said already, we have a high number of fatal accidents. Um, these figures are dominated by falling from height, as well as other issues such as use of plants and equipment. But let's not forget also the role of human behaviour, which um, construction managers and supervisors need to be well aware of. Now within that area of, of accidents, we also have non-fatal or, or major accidents uh, and these can be attributed to a number of causes. So the average supervisor and manager, they need to be aware of the, the not just the immediate causes of accidents, but also the underlying causes such as poor management decisions or the impact of the designer for, in fact. We tend to have a, a big problem in construction in terms of musculoskeletal disorders, or MSD for short. Uh, in layman's terms, that's things like uh, manual handling injuries, uh, backache and muscle ache. Uh, these actually account for most days lost from work within the construction industry, so it's another important area. Let's not forget other issues around health as well, such as um, vibration and noise. Uh, dust is a key area that HSE are um, focusing on uh, at the current moment in time. And let's not forget also uh, mental health and stress. Um, at this moment in time, the industry is trying to grapple with this difficult area and if you're a supervisor in particular you may be asked at some point in the future to consider being a mental health first aider for example. Well let us start with the, the basics of knowledge and understanding of these issues and of the ways in which workers can be harmed. Now, I'm not saying you have to have an encyclopedia knowledge of the CITV Construction Site Safety Manual, but it certainly helps. In addition to this, you need to know more about what it means to be a manager, and that will include things such as planning, scheduling and resourcing. It's not obvious at first, but um, the impact of these critical hard skills that managers and supervisors must possess will have an impact on construction health and safety. Looking, looking ahead to technological advances within the industry and how these can help to manage health and safety in a better way. Our Industry 4.2 initiative that government and industry are focusing on at the moment have incredible impact for how we manage health and safety. For example, uh, the use of off-site manufacture and prefabrication uh, has a tremendous impact on how we can reduce the exposure time of working in hazardous situations and is also a, a, a very strong recommendation from the health and safety executive as a way of managing risk. If the work is done in a factory or done in a safe area, then it, the risks can be managed easier. So the use of BIM technology can vastly improve how we manage health and safety, not just at the construction stage, 
but during maintenance and use as well. For example, clash detection can reduce vastly the amount of time that we have to spend undertaking remedial action, therefore reducing work at height time and reducing other hazards as well.